All right, we're doing this? Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, well. Got a little kimchi juice. Hey guys, welcome back to Making It. Today we're making a fried chicken sandwich. <clears throat> fried chicken sweat. Sandwich. A fried chicken sandwich. <clears throat> hey guys, welcome back to. I spit. No one wants that in their food video. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to making it. Today we're gonna make it a fried chicken sandwich. We cleave, uh, we Cleveland, we Cleveland, we Cleveland up with the fine folks over at Cleveland Kitchen. We're gonna be using their kimchi pickles, a lightly fermented, snappy, sweet, delicious product. Making a little sauce, little relishy type of saucy wonderfulness. To make a fried chicken sandwich, one of my favorite ways, I'll show you the little dredge, a little buttermilk. I'm gonna make a nice little tasty lunch for me and for you. And for anyone who wants to join. First up, let me light the candle. We'll place it on top of the Brad one for now. I'm in a mushroomy mood. It's a little overcasty. Storms are brewing out to sea. Hurricane Lee. We got the huge. We got the Lord of Death over there. He's hanging out. It's a positive thing. And we'll start. We'll start with that. We'll, we'll, with the headliner, all right? We're gonna be using kimchi pickles. Lightly fermented, tangy, sweet, a little bit of spice. I'm kind of chunky. I'm gonna chop them up, mix it into a little bit of a mayo. I'm a Hellman's guy. That's what we're gonna be rocking. Buttermilk, all right? Get as good as you can. If you can't make it yourself, I'm gonna be using a little bit of cakes from Maine. Wonderful. We got some white rice flour. A little bit of panko breadcrumb, which we're gonna, we're gonna pulse up a little bit. We're gonna make it a little finer than panko. All right, we got a little ground mustard, smoked paprika, ground coriander, chili powder, and that's gonna be part of our flour base. All right, we have a little all-purpose flour. We're gonna mix all that together. Put it in the food process on pulse, and we're gonna get into a nice little consistency to be our breading. Meanwhile, we have chicken. I have some breast and some chicken thigh, boneless. I salted it yesterday, and that's just gonna allow for a nice seasoning. I always salt my meat a day ahead if I can, at least a few hours, uh, depending on the thickness and the type of meat. But something chunky like this, uh, I got away with doing it overnight. What else am I forgetting? A little golden yellow tomato from the Gardon. I would even call it orange. And some little, and we got some rolls that I picked up down there from the market. All right, just a nice little seeded type of Kaiser roll. I got some peanut oil heating up in the old cast iron. All right, we're gonna bring that up to like a 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think that's it. I think that's what we're rocking with. Maybe a little salt, a little pep. I might throw a little wild card in there as we go because we're cooking. I don't even think lettuce. I think we're just gonna do a nice big fat chunk of tomato, maybe a little dried oregano because I've really been on a dried oregano kick. And then our sauce. We're gonna pull some of that good stuff in the bottom there. There's carrots and garlic and uh, looks like scallions. But that's it for the shrine, all right? What else we got? Serrated blade. Big, uh, everyone, that's great, Brad. Woo! Let's get started, let's get started. Are you afraid of the dark? Nickelodeon, when the kids sat around the fire, whoever's turn it was told like a real scary, it was about to tell a scary story. And they had, I think they had like some sand or something, some magic sand. And it was like smoke up the fire. It was a full on production. Are you afraid of the dark? Anyway, let's make fried chicken sandwiches. All right, ready? Ready. Uh, let me get ready. Do you want to clap? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Starting uh, cutting the chicken. Take uh, one. Act one, scene one, take two. So I have our chicken that I salted overnight. Okay, I guess I we're using boneless, skinless breast and thighs. We're gonna make two styles, all right? Cause like, there's always the age old question. Oh, chicken thigh makes the best fried chicken. Some people like a chicken. I like the chicken breast. It takes a little bit longer. That's what we're gonna do, look. And we're putting them on little buns, okay? Maybe just do a little, dit, 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 little hatchy hatch on it some little nooks and crannies for our buttermilk and our spices, little shaggy raggy thing. Boom, just like that. 
boom, this one just, we're gonna give a couple little hatchies. And we're not going deep. You don't wanna go making a big mess. Just wanna give it a little texture, almost like a surface cube steak, patent pending. And then the thighs are kind of there. They are what they are. Don't get me wrong, love a chicken thigh. You almost need two of them on a good sandwich. Otherwise the bread to breading ratio, and there's just not enough protein uh, for me. You know, cause look, this side nice and thick, but the flap, part of my favorite part of the thigh, whenever you get that part on the bread, it's just like, oh, uh, you know, you're kind of missing that little chunker there. To each their own. We like to give friends and family options around here. See, that's kind of nice though, right? It's already raggy taggied up a little bit. A little bit of a bigger thigh was a bigger bird. And then the breast. Boom, cut them out a little bit of an angle there. That little chicken grizzle, I'm gonna prune that right off, all right? Yeah, prune. If you see any gnarly little bits, I, I, I just prune them off. Scuzzy buzzies, I prune it right off. No one wants to bite into that. Back in our bin here. Just a little hatchy tatchy here. Nice, we're in good shape. Let me clean this up, and then we're gonna add the buttermilk and the spices, and we're gonna talk about that. What's hatchy tatchy? Little, little choppy woppy, you know, little, Slicey slicey, you know, a little. What's a little. scuzzy wuzzy? Scuzzy wuzzy, I said that. You know, scuzzy wuzzy, like a little nasty little futurucci, you know? But we're gonna cover them up with some buttermilk. A little bit more than that. There we go, buddy. I would say about 28 ounces mustard powder, all right? We're not gonna do a ton. Let's say a tablespoon, all right? Don't, wor don't worry, this is all gonna get mixed up. Coriander, ground. Let's say. About a tablespoon. I like that. Chili powder. Again, it's about a table. This is about a tablespoon. Tablespoon type of deal here. And the smoked paprika. Let's get rid of the governor. Spice governor's gotta go. There we go. All right, smoked paprika. Say about a half a tablespoon. Or whatever you think that is. A little ground black pep. Just give it a good we're gonna give it 17 cranks. Yep. I wasn't counting, but felt like 17. And a little wild card, we're gonna, just for fun, okay? Just cause uh, I saw it over there and whatever. Couple, it's probably not gonna do anything. Couple dabs of the hot sesame oil. Why not? Yeah. Like I said, you let that sit overnight. 12, 18, 24, 36, 48 hours. Depending on what you're doing and the type of meat. Let me mix that up. I wanna use my hands, but I don't wanna wash them. Let's just do it, we're gonna do it. Yeah, you gotta do it. Do it right, Brad. Making fried chicken. Look at that, that's what we're looking at. Nice little beautiful mixture in there. Everything well incorporated. And again, I seasoned the chicken ahead of time, so the salt's already there. And it's just a nice little generous little sprinkle. You know, they say, what, a teaspoon per pound? And that's it, all right? It's all mixed up nice, I'm just playing with it now. So let's put a lid on that, I'll pop it in the fridge, and we'll, um, we'll prep our breading and our sauce. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Ooh, this water gets hot! Hot! Almost forgot, secret ingredient is a little bit of that really nice kimchi juice. Give it a little stir. All right, it's gonna add that nice little pickly, spicy goodness right to it, all right? Oh, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Again, we'll let that sit. A few hours, the minimum, overnight would be great. Like I've said, I've even gone a little longer. I'll pop this in the fridge. That's a weird smell. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble. Ready? Yeah. The dredge. Dredge. All right, we got my fancy food processor here. I love it. Okay, what model is this? I don't know. For some reason, I thought I would say it on it, but pro classic. Just like me, babe. So we got a little all purpose flour. We have some panko. We're going to add about, say, a half a cup. And then we're going to add some all purpose flour here. Okay? Let's think about this. Let's think about this real quick. About a cup, okay? About a cup. We're going to add a little bit more panko. Then we're going to add, say, like a quarter cup of white rice flour. And that's a fine flour. We're gonna give it that real nice kind of crisp. I like this little blend here. Okay, that's scutuch. Black pep. I don't add salt to this. I'll add a sprinkle of a little salt at the end. Um, it's just how I do it. All right. And just for 
No, 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 we're not going to do it. Never mind. Stupid idea. Nothing. I'm not even going to tell you. Well, no, I was like, maybe I'll put a little pinch of that dried oregano in there, but I'm like, no, this is the outside. It's probably going to burn a little bit and give off a little bit of a bitterness instead of that nice, fresh, aromatic-y type of thing. So when I hit it with a little salt, maybe I'll hit it with a little oregano, I was thinking. But I was like, then, wait a minute, why don't I just salt the tomato with a little bit of salt and pepper and oregano? But then I was like, wait, maybe it doesn't need oregano. But that's what I was thinking. Let's blitz this. Not only are we incorporating the nice mixture, but we're gonna break up that panko a little bit and just give it see where we're at buddy yeah yeah still a little bit of texture in there of that panko but look broken up you can't even see it really but there is a little bit of see those little little chunkers that's what we're looking for that's what i'm looking for that should be enough for what we're doing a couple pieces we're making two tree sandwiches all right you don't want to be running out of dredging okay mid fry you're like oh god let me whip that back together is that enough brad let's do a little bit more that's good I'd rather have a little extra. Even though it's not something you go reusing, it's kind of a one-shot go. A little more, a little more black. Beautiful. Yeah, I feel better about that. Clean as you go. So that's our dredging componentry. Next, we'll jump right into the sauce. I don't want to get too much liquid in there yet. We want to control that. That looks like a good amount of pickles. You know, about a cup. Let me try to get some of that good stuff at the bottom too. So I want to mix in some of the carrot that's in there and some of those other spices that they have in that really awesome flavorful brine. Yeah, look at that. That's a good, that was a good scoop for Brad there. And we'll give him a nice chop. Could use the food processor, but uh, there's something satisfying about chopping up crunchy little pickles. But I love with a fried chicken when you get, you know, if it, whether it's a normal pickle or a ferment, you know, a fermented kimchi style pickle like this, where it gives it that nice kind of crunchy vegetal, sweet, sour, tangy, just goes really well with that hot fried chicken. I mean, fried chicken's good by itself, but a little bit of heat, a little bit of funk, kind of can't go wrong. That's looking good to me. And we're gonna put that right in our bowl. And this sauce, man, beyond just chicken, be good on anything and you can put this on whatever you want a little bit of mayonnaise good good bloop what is that you know a quarter cup start small always add more you know okay all right okay and i'm thinking we're gonna add a little bit of that smoked paprika a couple of taps right there that's nice you know it doesn't have too too much spice in it but it's got a little subtlety a little bit of heat you know from the fermented kimchi pickle the paprika isn't really too spicy, but it's gonna add a nice little smokiness to it. Just something to kind of coat the chicken. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, let me taste it, see what it needs. Wow, delicious. You know, the brine kind of dilutes out the mayonnaise a bit, brings it to more of like a dressing world. Perfect little balance of sweet, spicy, tangy. I think it's gonna be perfect on our sandwich. I think we're on to something really good here. Look at this bug you let in, Carolyn. Where'd it go? There's a big f***ing mosquito eater. All right, we're rolling on you. <clears throat> All right, so we got our overnight buttermilk. So let's go ahead and grab, we're gonna make two sandwiches. A nice breast with our little thatches. I'm gonna give it a little drip, a little drip and a shake. We don't have too much of it on there, but enough so it'll batter up nice. And for all you thigh folks out there, again, I give it a little push down and then a little flip. So I don't go making a big mess. Perfect. And you just want to really kind of let that flour stick on there, hydrate on the surface a little bit, and just get nice and shaggy. You want every little bit covered, and that'll be a nice little crispy kind of little outside crust for us. So we get those nice little nooks in there. Real nice like that. We'll give it a little shake right before we fly it, right before we fry it. To the fryer, bud. All right, got my little fry apron on, little splatter guard, already dredged up, ready to go. We got our landing zone, resting rack, little paper towel. You don't want it sitting in oil. You want it to stay crispy, not get soggy. Always on a little landing zone. That's what I like. We got our oil preheated, 350. When I put the chicken in, I'll probably turn it up a little bit to act for as a little recovery on the heat. When you put cold things in the oil, temperature drops a bit. No big deal. We're not doing a ton of chicken, but when you are doing a lot of anything on a fry, you want to watch your temperature and look for recovery. We want to give it a little shake off. You don't want 
and a lot of that extra, extra flour in there. Just enough that's sticking to it. That breast being a bit thicker is gonna take a little more time to fry, but that's okay. Again, we're gonna let like a steak, you're gonna let this rest for a little. And again, look, you see, as soon as I put that chicken in, it dropped almost 50 degrees. So we'll turn the heat up a little bit, a little recovery. 350 is a good spot, too hot, it tends to burn the outside before the inside is cooked, especially on something thicker like that chicken breast. If you were doing little shrimp or something, hot and fast you can get away with, but the last thing you want is burnt outside and undercooked on the inside. It is really pounding out there. The temperature did drop quite a bit. Yeah, so what you're looking for is that nice little, you know, we're gonna go, this is about halfway done. All right, we're gonna let that outside darken up a bit. Not too bready to my liking, but a little bit of crunchy. And then when the bubbles really start to subside and almost non-exist anymore, that is a good indicator when, when you're cooking chicken or meat when it's done. Because what's happening there is that moisture, water from the meat is escaping, causing bubbles in the oil. Like if you were to put a little bit of water in oil, it splatters, it bubbles. So that's basically what's happening on the inside of the meat there. Or, you know, if you're worried, you can get an instant read thermometer and hit the correct temperatures uh, for poultry, whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever the USDA recommends, uh, you can check that online. I don't want to butcher it, but I'm going to say 165 or something. You start looking at it, you're like, oh, that looks nice on the outside. The last thing you want to do is pull this thing out, cut it open, have your sandwich, and the inside's pink, all right? We're not making tuna here. We want chicken. I don't, you want it cooked nice, perfect. Let's just hit the right temperature, whammo, okay? Let's go, girls. Boop, boop, boo, doo, doo. Is that Shania Twain? I feel like I've said this like 80 times on camera. I have, oh my God. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Is this Shania Twain? Yeah. <laughs> Act like you don't know, Brad. It's gotta be Shania Twain. Do, 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 do. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Let's go, girls. Best dang fried chicken this side of Thames River. All right, so our bubbles have really calmed down a bit. Really gentle, there's still a little bit in there, but that's okay. We don't want it to be a piece of charcoal. I'm feeling really good about the temp. I can check it with the thermometer, but that baby's looking pretty good. When you pull it out, I like to drain as much oil back into the pot, give it a flip, let it rest. Beautiful. Turn your oil off. I always like to put a lid on top of it. If you don't have a lid for a cast iron, a sheet tray, just so people know it's hot, nothing falls in it, splatters, ruins your day, scars your kid for life. You know what I'm saying? Safety first when you're frying, always. Ooh, whack that midair, dude. Dude, I just hit two flies in midair. I don't know. You don't know. I just I don't know. know if you did. I know. All right. All right, let's do this. Let's bring this saucy little Susie home. So our chicken has been resting out of the oil for about seven, eight minutes now. Let those, just like a steak, you want those juices to reconstitute back into the meat a bit, temperature to cool down a little bit, and that oil to drain off. So now we just got a nice little, nice little crispy crust, not too bready. Should be a decent amount of meat ratio. We're gonna make two sandwiches, one on the toasted, I mean on the, on the sesame Kaiser, definitely not toasted. Beautiful, beautiful. Boom, boom. Tomato from the garden. Can't beat an orange tomato, good God. And I put a little bit of sauce on both sides. Top, I'll do a little less, that's the tomato side. Nice little slab of tomato. Nice little slab of tomato, that don't look too bad. Always a little salt and pepper on your tomatoes, all right? Always, oh, oh that looks good enough to eat right there, don't it? A Little bit of salt on our chicken, nothing, cra I mean, not, nothing crazy. All right, remember that chicken is already seasoned. A Little bit of dried oregano from the garden. Look at then we got our landing zone here, the bottom. Give a nice little, little scoops of that. Nice little tang, a little funk. When you have that lightly fermented pickle there, it's gonna add that little bit of umami, right? That little depth of flavor. What am I forgetting? Not, oh yeah, couple, we're gonna put a couple of these pickles right on the tomato too. Fried chicken sandwich with tomatoes, you bet. That alone, maybe another slice of tomato, I would eat it. Chicken going right down. Oh, not. That, go, that color really came through. Adding the brine from the kimchi pickle there with the paprika adds a nice little hue of color, not just flavor. Just looks delicious. That looks, that looks great. All right, ready? 
Topo. A little light push down. I get it. The breast is a lot, but I think I might like it better still. All right, and then the moment of truth, let's cut it. We'll plate it right up, see what she looks like. Ooh, baby, sign me up for that any day of the week. Look at the breast. You can't, that's a chicken sandwich, all right? Sometimes, how many times you order a chicken sandwich and you're like, one bite was had some chicken in and then the rest is breading and breading and then roll and breading and tomato. That's what I'm saying, Papa. All right, a little bit of each. Everyone, everyone's happy at this fried chicken party. Not bad, that's not bad either, but that was a good, that was a good thigh. Buttes, buttes. All right, well, let's give it a shot. Everything's cut up nice, beautiful. All right, let's go. Mm. The breast, it's nice. Maybe a little thick. I could have like hatched out a little bit more. All right, it's just a mouthful. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'll be craving that all the time. I'm still gonna curse people when they don't, when, they, when the ratio is off. But that might be a little bit much. You can, all you get is a lot of chicken. The sauce is awesome. Spicy, sweet, tangy, a little bit of funk. You know, not only did I put the pickles on there, but chopping it up into the sauce, that's kind of the takeaway for me where it's like usually just a topper or something you can eat on the side. Uh, Let's try the thigh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of better. What I like about the thigh one, you get to taste the sauce a bit more. Um, again, both really awesome. That fresh tomato mixed in with the crunchy, funky, for lightly fermented cucumber. Kind of a home run. A little bit of creaminess, a little bit of oregano, salt, pep. Perfect fried chicken, in my opinion. Thank you, Cleveland Kitchen. Check it out. It's available all types of supermarkets. We love you guys. Give them a shot. A little zing, a little zang. Believe in yourself, believe in the pickle, and fry your chicken to 165. FDA recommended. Thanks for playing. Believe in yourself and believe in the funk. We love you. Let's eat some more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Alright, good. You guys eat these other pieces.